Um, add them up. All right. All right. So what is going on, uh, Kev? I'm excited to have you here. We're going to wait for a few people to hop on. And, and actually, Adam just literally disappeared right before we put this. So we're going to wait on him and everything like that. We're very excited to have you here today. How, how have you been? Uh, hey, thus far you know, in the new it's, year? It, it's interesting. Uh, I'm, last year, I traveled over 200 days, uh, 80 plus events. And this, in the last five months, um, one event, one trip outside the state of Florida. So um, been a, wow. a little bit of a change, but I will say this, there's, it, it, I, I'm, I'm, I've enjoyed the, the, the time to be able to focus in, on, on some things. And there's been some really amazing things that have happened in my life over the last five months. Um, I think it's given me a chance to do a lot of uh, uh, thinking and, and soul searching and getting clarity in a lot of ways. And um, I, I, I have to say, it's, it, for me, it's, it's been a, a, a pretty amazing uh, um, few months, um, even though at times um, many businesses that I'm involved with are, are struggling. And, that, and that's the tough part of it. So, um, mm. I mean, maybe probably the, the best news of 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 where of where uh, the the situation is for me is that I, years ago I diversified to get into more than just you know I was the as seen on TV guy as seen on TV dot com as seen on TV Inc and and that was a great business for many many years for me and uh, continues to still work for for um, some of the top guys in that business still but I decided hey look I've got all my eggs in one basket I, I need to diversify and be involved in you know, dozens of opportunities and equities and things. So, so, you know, I, I, my situation is, 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 is good in that I, I can have a few that are going well and a few that aren't, but, but still have a positive thing. So I know we're going to be talking about ideas for the future. And, and so maybe that's a, maybe a good thought to get started on, but anyway, thanks for asking. I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, awesome. Good, good to get you back on Adam. And, um, just really quickly for everyone that doesn't know who Kevin Harrington is, guys. Okay, so Kevin Harrington is the original shark from Shark Tank. Okay, those hard years in the very beginning of Shark Tank where it's like, this is like, it's either going to make it or it's not going to make it. Kev was part of those first four years. So that was amazing where they were able to come from obscurity to something phenomenal. You guys have seen what has happened with Shark Tank. The creator of the infomercial has been part of 20 companies that have generated over $100 million. And I'm sure there's even more than that. Um, generated over $5 billion of sales. Um, and he's been in the movie um, Think and Grow Rich. If you guys haven't seen that movie, um, super amazing. So we're talking about one of the super entrepreneurs of the century, okay? So like when it comes to entrepreneurship, this is one of the guys that you guys can actually look at, um, author of a whole bunch of books, and it's gonna be quite exciting. Um, I know me and Adam, we're looking forward to this one and everything like that. So we're very happy to have you here, Kev. Um, Thank and you, man. Great to be well here. I need you to make all my introductions. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> hype man, hype man. Yeah, thank you, man. thank you so much for joining us. As Jonathan pointed out, I mean, we're we're thrilled to have you. It's you know we're certainly in an interesting time, and uh, you know people uh, I I feel like have taken two different directions with this pandemic. Many have said I'm going to wait and sort of wait this thing out to see if things get better and maybe address my business ideas at a later time, and then others have adapted and pivoted and maybe address some current needs uh, for, for consumers in this current climate. We want to hear from your perspective. What are you seeing? What are some trends that you've seen? And what are some uh, some deals that maybe you're interested in in this climate? Yeah. Hey, great, great question. So, yeah, I mean, initially, one of the first things many people did, <laughs> including me for a few days, was kind of put your head in the sand. Like, oh, my God what's what's happening and what where is the future and how long is this going to last um i remember when it first when 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 it first kind of was really creeping up i was in hong kong taipei singapore um in february and when i was coming home i'm like this is really getting bad over here um and i came home and started to tell people about you know what was going on over in asia 
And 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 there people are like, oh, it, it's it's coming here, but is this going to be a quick bell-shaped curve? And so March hit, and I and I'm I'm thinking, well, uh, this has got to come and go. We're going to be ready this summer. We're you know by the summer we should be back in action. That was wishful thinking and aggressive thinking, but obviously um, we continue to to deal with with the change in in uh, and schooling and business and travel and and et cetera. So. Um, I think it, now that we've had a chance to really kind of take a look at what's happening, I mean, it, it, one of the big, I go to dozens of trade shows a year, um, the, the Chicago houseware show and the, the automotive show and the hardware show and beauty and fitness and on and on and golf and toy fair, et cetera. The consumer electronic show. Well, guess what? Consumer electronic show, January canceled. <laughs> okay. Back to, it's a virtual. Crazy. event. I mean, it's it so we're going all the way into next year and who knows how far into next year so mm -hmm. the world has changed it's going to be different forever um I, you know uh, I, all the different kinds of you know we did a big when was it the big mastermind that we did down in miami jonathan seems like eight ago. Huh? It, was, oh, it was october it was october, october that was that, right? that was like, it was a great event wow. but <laughs> we probably said we're going to be doing this annually right but not yeah. this october no um, so, you know, it, at the end of the day that, that, so the first thing is put the head in the sand, but boy, I got, that was 48 hours for me. I figured, you know, can't breathe down there. I got to get up and get moving. So, uh, the first thing I did is I said, okay, what's happening in the world? First of all, people are at home. There's 30 million, there were 30 million unemployed people. People are at home. They're watching the, 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 the internet. They're, uh, they're watching television because they're, they're at, they're, they're at home. So all of the metrics in, in my world of digital marketing, as seen on TV, were going up. We were, we were seeing increased uh, viewerships everywhere. And then at the same time, because restaurants were closing and, and concerts were closing, the advertising revenues were, were dropping like crazy. So you had huge viewership increases and huge advertising declines which left this amazing opportunity for direct marketers, digital marketers to get out there and start crushing it. And so we, we, we said back to the basics of customer acquisition, let's hit it hard, put all of our efforts into full e-commerce activities. And mm. I mean, you know, what's, what was happening around us all, Pier 1 Imports, bankrupt, right? Well, who bought Pier 1 Imports? I don't know if you know, but, um, uh, a, a, a Ty Lopez and his partner were, you know, they're like, Alex hey, Murr. We're, yeah. who's that? Alex Murr. Yeah. Alex yeah. Murr, right. Alex. You know, so what is, what, what is, what is Alex and, and Ty doing? They're buying up assets that have unbelievable digital opportunities <laughs> because these yeah. companies never thought that there was going to be a day that if they didn't have e-commerce, they'd be out of business. And so, yeah. I mean, and, and, and keep going from there. I mean, Jamie Salter, Authentic Brands, is buying up brand after brand after brand after brand, brand and, and, and crushing it because he, he's got the vision. And so um, I'm getting calls on a daily, weekly basis, people wanting to buy businesses, sell businesses, this and that. There's great opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. And just one thing. So here I am. I'm a, I'm a product guy for, for almost 40 years. And and what products are, are going to be good? Well, people are staying at home, right? Well, so maybe housewares, hardwares, various things like this. So we went back to the basics of going after. We had, we had products back in the day. We were selling the magic wrench, the magic saw, the magic hammer. People are staying at home. So QVC has been airing these magic tools. And I mean, I'm talking... 250,000 of these, 150,000 of these, boom, boom, boom. So, you know, it's, it's time to get back to the basics, back to the things you know best, but the focus needs to be in, in the e-com side of the business and, and customer acquisition. Just last thing I'll say, and I'll flip it back to you guys. We, we had one campaign was doing an $18 cost per acquisition um, before COVID, during COVID dropped to five bucks. And, and that's because of those metrics I was just telling you. Yeah. About. So, so now is the time to really focus on 
on the, 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 the future. And that is the direct to the consumer business. Wow. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I mean, I hear you loud and clear because e-com is is my background and, you know, some some staggering results um, for those of you that didn't know. And, you know, entrepreneurs and startups, um, the e-commerce space is blowing up. So we were seeing traffic on Shopify overall throughout the world, literally for an entire month. And I would guess almost up to a, a month and a half higher than Black Friday and Cyber Monday. OK, like that is not that's staggering, you know, like yeah. those type of statistics only come in like a black swan event. So that leads me to my very next question um, for those entrepreneurs right now that had physical locations and they had physical businesses. Um, what is your take for the end of 2020 going into 2021? What are they to do? Because, you know, you've done this magnificent shift. And for these people, what would be your psychology to give them to say, like, hey, this is where you should be going in the future? Well, I and, think, and, and I mean, 2020 and 21. If, if you have physical spaces, I mean, what a lot of the, the big national guys that, that are in, in difficulties, when, when you file Chapter 11, you basically get a chance to just tear up every lease that you've ever signed. OK, so, you know, I've been involved with the different companies of mine with with several bankruptcies like that. And it's a it's a kind of a golden ticket that you can write yourself that you get to kind of redo things. Right. So if, if you had, you know, I mean, WeWorks is in the middle of massive renegotiations of all of the I mean, they had huge leases and big long term leases and big buildings and 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 and, and they're under occupied. So, I mean, they they I don't think they've filed any kind of bankruptcy or anything yet. Maybe they will. But I mean, it, if, if you've got retail locations, now is the time, even without filing for bankruptcy, you, you should be renegotiating your deals. OK, I mean, one of the first things that I did when 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 I saw all this stuff hitting the fan, um, you know, I have in, in many different businesses, we have accountants and we have lawyers and we have monthly obligations. Well, we looked at all of our monthly obligations. And I mean, from from an accounting standpoint, one of our companies, we were paying seventy five hundred dollars a month for accounting, uh, accounting. But now, oh, it's going to be a hell of a lot less uh, things you're going to need to account for. We, we dropped it to twenty five hundred dollars a month. So we started renegotiating lots of different deals from from leases to, to relationships to monthly payments. Um, mm -hmm. Even personally, I said to my wife, you know, I get I, I buy a lot of products online and stuff and you end up getting hooked for these auto ship things. And I have 30 plus different auto ships happening on a monthly basis that, I, you know, you just forget about and they're just happening. Yeah, all the description. Credit yeah, it's a subscription. I mean, this is this could be tens of thousands of dollars, you know, over over time. So, you know, get to the basics of analyzing every relationship you have in 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 business in in uh, in personal and in uh, in and and also um, all the kind of monthly obligations you have. In fact, I mean, if you haven't, interest rates um, have have dropped dramatically. So um, I had a I've got a, a couple different mortgage situations. Um, I, I you know getting phone calls. Hey, you want to go from four and a half to two point seven eight for your for your mortgage? Um, Why wouldn't hey, you? Let's, let, you know, let's take a look. Any closing points? No, no closing points. Just drop your payment by three grand a month. OK, it's like, oh, yeah. why shouldn't I do that? Right. It's this is the time to kind of wipe the slate clean, start over, start fresh. Um, and and most people, I mean, some people may not be uh, amenable to negotiating, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's it, it's a good it's a good path to start. Yeah, those, those are all solid points. And, and you know, in this climate, you know, we have to use the tools we have and we have to use the contacts we have. And if we can renegotiate some deals, why not? And if we can save some money, why not? Uh, yeah. I, it's, I, a big, I, it's, I mean, it's a big thing off the fat, right? It's like trimming of the fat. That's oh, yeah. what, like well, so many people, things that you kind of were, you're like, man, I shouldn't be paying for this, but OK, I'm paying for it, you know, in the business world. And, and obviously a place that you're actually staying, you're going to negotiate. You are going to cut the trim off the fat. So my, my father called me and he told me, he's like, he's like, hey, he's like, COVID hit, you know, where our sales are down. I've negotiated literally almost every single one of my vendors to give me cheaper prices on everything. And I'm like, everyone? He's like, yes, literally everyone. 
So it's like he was trimming off the fat. He's an accountant by trade. So like, you know, like he knew exactly that was. So, you know, just adding that to, to that. Well, there. You know, in 1990, I had a uh, uh, 30 years ago, I was uh, had a had I was big time in the S unit TV business. We had offices in London um, and around the world shipping product. And when the Gulf War hit in 1990, our sales dropped by 90 percent. And so we went through very similar situations back in the day where we had to had to hunker down, trim, cut, renegotiate. And so when this happened, I just went back into 30 year ago mode, you know, Gulf War mode, COVID mode, same same drill. And 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 just and, and at the end of the day, very few. I mean, there was a few people I thought they're going to tell me, no way, I'm not going to reduce my fee or this or that. And guess what? Most people were were, were 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 coming to the table because everyone's looking for long term relationships. And if that's exactly right, hard bargain, you know, then there may be no bargain. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's it's, it's uh, there's opportunities in 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 tough times, and and I think that's you know that's one of the 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 the, the greatest things that we've talked about e-com and, and getting back into into customer acquisition which is one of the things that we really wanted to focus on right so obviously pitch investors live you're an advisor you're an investor you know we obviously appreciate all you've done for the company um and and this this uh, this company is catered to the startup community there are a lot of early stage startups and many of those startups have either been deterred by this or maybe don't want to spend the money now. Um, you know, what are, what would be some interesting products or deals that you personally or your team would be interested in seeing pitch on the pitch investors live platform? Yeah. So, and, uh, and good question. And I'll answer that in a second. The one thing I would say is when in the startup mode that we're, that many companies are in, Sometimes in a in a COVID situation here, you need to pivot a little bit, right? So one possible pivot in in a situation like this, and I'm just putting myself into the shoes of if if I was starting something that was daunting and uh, tasks ahead of me to get there, maybe it's time to think about partnering, licensing, you know, maybe considering a a, a uh, an alternative way to get there. Okay, I mean. One of the challenges that that I run into, you know, a la the Shark Tank style uh, pitching and stuff. Hey, I want a million dollars for 10 percent of my company, Mr. Shark. Um, you know, it's like, well, guess what? I'm not going to give you the million for 10 percent. And maybe you should think of another plan because that's not going to work anymore. <laughs> and maybe you need to partner with somebody to get it started and then come back and ask for something more reasonable. But, you know, I, I think you know where I'm going with this. I think the bottom mm -hmm. line is over the years, um, I've, I have focused, I call it amazing partnerships. And so, um, you know, I mean, I, I had an infomercial company back in the, in the 80s. We grew it and went public with it and, and, and grew it to $500 million in sales and then sold my interest. And I was going to start, I had a no non-compete starting a new company. Well, I said, I can start my own company. I got the capital. I've got the know-how. But what's a better way to do it? I said, maybe I could create an amazing partnership. I, and, I, and HSN and myself sat down. I, I went down and talked to the CEO of Home Shopping Network. We formed a venture. And I said, hey, I, I, I want to do things a little easier this next round. I mean, starting from scratch all by yourself, raising the capital, doing it all. Is, is, is daunting. But mm -hmm. if you can leverage yourself, so I walked into Home Shopping Network, shook hands with them, we got a $10 million line of credit, we got access to all their celebrities and stars, and we launched a business 50-50 called Home Shopping Network Direct. And I was happy to own 50% of a company that ended up, went to $300 million in sales. So, um, you know, and, and we had a very fast growth. I mean, we hit our first Grand Slam, our very first infomercial was the Tony Little Ab Isolator, which ended up wow. doing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And then we did more Tony Little and Jack Lillane this and that and, and Frankie Avalon, zero pains. And, and the bottom line is, is that even as strong as an, of an entrepreneur that, that I had been having an exit strategy from a $500 million deal, 
I said, I'm going to create an amazing partnership and leverage myself. So, so for entrepreneurs out there, for people on pitch uh, investors live, um, think about bringing in that dream team, bringing in those mentors, those coaches, the, those, those partnerships that can give you some added uh, strength and, and positioning in your pitch. Number one, because, Hey, what is pitch investors live? It starts with the word pitch. So That's right. if you don't have a good pitch, you're not going to, have a lot of success on our app. So, I mean, I think, again, we're seeing way too many PPE products right now. So, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, as it was all coming in, I shifted it all over to my son because I said, I know I'm going to get dozens and dozens and hundreds of PPE opportunities. Brian, my son, is my PPP expert because yes, <laughs> everybody says, I've got a new face mask. I've got a new this. I've got a new that. Now, having said that, there are breakthroughs that will happen there. And there are some, some good, good products that are still going to come out, some unique positionings. So we're still keeping our eyes and ears open positively in that regard. And this is going to be with us forever, by the way. So... Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's not going to be like there's some industries that are that are crash and burns upside it goes up and then down. This this is an industry that's going to be here for quite a while. So um, but uh, that isn't my, you know, my lowest hanging fruit is not. Oh, let me hear about your sanitizers and face masks. Right. I, I like back to the basics. I like housewares. I like hardware. People are around the house. I mean, for five months, I've only left one time the state of Florida, right? So, wow. um, you know, my wife and I, we, you know, we very seldom cook. We used to eat out a lot, but you know, and I was gone half the time. So you know, I'd come <laughs> home, we'd eat out. Now we, we eat in five to six days a week. Of course, maybe a little Uber eats here and there too. But, you know, um, I think that when, when you, when you look at the world of as seen on TV, it's still the copper pans, this and that, and it, there's still some great stuff coming out there. So, and I just mentioned, you know, some tools and magical uh, wrenches and hammers and things. These are kinds of, these are the kinds of products that are, are working. So also, by the way, fitness, home gyms, I mean, I went to a, a, a website to try to order some home, home gym equipment. Four months wow. delay on getting wow. it sold out, right? Yeah. So it there's great opportunities out there in certain categories for sure. Yeah, it's been a very like adaptive environment, you know, like uh, like taking off what you said right there. There's one of my buddies that he started and he's doing this at a much larger scale now. He's just basically selling, um, let's say, any type of home equipment, workout equipment because it's sold out everywhere. Like I know I've gone even to this day, even right now, I can't even find any workout equipment because I was trying to have some stuff in my home. So he started adapting completely and started buying from certain places and then selling them on other platforms, basically a huge arbitrage, killing it. I'm talking about the profit margins were so ridiculous. I couldn't even believe or fathom it, like how you could sell weights for so much money. And that showed the supply and demand very similar to like toilet paper and even hand sanitizer was at one point. So what would you say, Kev, in, in, in the past, you know, like what, uh, the Gulf War was something that kind of was like rough, rough and everything like that. But can you tell us of, like another rough scenario that you had in your life that kind of almost mimics this? Is it that Gulf War type of scenario? And yeah. like for these people, there's a lot of people that have actually lost their businesses, lost their jobs, and they have to adapt and they're kind of scared to do it. So yeah. can you give us a little uh, background? I've had some near death experiences in the, in the world of business, okay? <laughs> business death, right? Um, you know, I mean, I'll never forget, I, we, we, I had a business that was cranking and we were, we were, we were doing, um, $2 million a week in sales, um, had about a dozen products that, that contributed to that volume. And, um, um, and, and little did I know, we, we ran it all through our, you know, our banking and merchant account and all that. But one of those dozen products, um, you know, I, I, didn't manu I didn't manufacture any of my stuff. I used factories. I contracted out with many factories in China. So, but one of the items that we were shipping, we didn't realize it until it was too late, we were getting massive defects from the factory. So 30% of what we were shipping, they'd open the box and it was either broken, didn't work, plug it in, no work. You're like, what do you, you're, you're upset, right? You just spent a hundred bucks for something, you plug it in and it doesn't even turn on. So 30% of them, well, they were calling the banks. They were charging it back. 
And so I, one day my accountant told my CFO told me they, the, the bank just grabbed our cash flow, two million dollars out of our account. And and they, they had the right to do that per the contract because they were they were our merchant processor. So um, make a long story short, we ended up getting out of this, but we were basically out of business because I didn't I wasn't just sitting with a pile of cash. That two million was my working capital. It, it would come in and then it would go out for inventory, for salaries, for media. And it, it rolled every single week, two million, boom, boom, boom. It was it was a profit that was rolling to keep our business running. Once they grabbed it, we were shut down. And so we ended up sitting with the bank, negotiating a, a, a resolution to it, letting them keep a little bit, getting about 400,000. But what we did is we then set up 12 different merchant accounts so that every, uh, every product was running on its own. So that if we had one little blip with one of the, the product that gave us the problems was 5% of our total sales, but it was giving us 100% of our overall problems oh, and yeah. almost shut us down. So, you, you know, planning for the future, these are all the things that we have in place now. And, and by the way, the banks are even more difficult today than they were when this happened to me a few years ago. I mean, if, if you asked every entrepreneur out there, raise your hand if you've had merchant account issues um, or getting them, keeping them, the volume that you put through them. <laughs> How often does it happen? You put a bunch of volume through, then they say, hey, we're going to keep all that money in reserve until, you know, we, we, we know that uh, something better happens down the road. So you got to be proactive. And the one thing I, I this always leads me back to having the right mentors, the right dream team, the right people on your, your, your team of advisors. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we know you, you just have a couple more minutes and we, we want to be mindful of, uh, of your time. But uh, for, for many entrepreneurs out there, they need a lot of handholding. They need some guidance. This is maybe their first go around with the, the entrepreneurial path. Can you give maybe three action items to give them the best chance of success in this climate? OK, I mean, look, um, let me think. Uh, so. I guess, first of all, we kind of been talking about this stuff. So excuse me as I'm just moving around here a little bit. But um, so I think that the, the 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 first thing I would say to anybody that is this now somebody that's already in business or. An yeah, just well, somebody that maybe has an idea, maybe early stage startup uh, best okay. succeeding in this climate. Yeah. OK, so, I mean, I think the the, the very first thing that you should do is especially because you know here we are pitch investors live is a is a mobile app that you get access to investors and knowledge and and all of that um i i would really work on the presentation that you're that you're putting together i mean this if if you're going to get on shark tank you better have a good pitch right and a good presentation so um i i have helped many people actually get on shark tank since you know i was a, sh a shark in in the older days but I've helped them put pitches together because you, you get a sense of, of what it takes to make it happen. OK, and, and I get that sense because I've taken tens of thousands of pitches. So I think the, the bottom line is, is that you need a, you know, a really powerful presentation. And it also it, it uh, somebody sent me the other day, like a 40 page presentation and I'm 20 pages in, don't even know what the heck it's saying. Right. Yeah. So. It, it, it needs to be concise and to the point and executive summary style and powerful, okay? So I think that is probably a first step. A second step would be making sure that when, when you're pitching me, I, I don't, you know, if you're a single entrepreneur all by yourself, what's your track record? Do you have an exit? Because anymore today, I, I don't like taking chances on just, startup entrepreneurs that it's their first rodeo. Um, I, I like to know that that entrepreneur has been able to build something and, 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 and with the intent to sell it and make the investors money because yeah. too many people go on to a show like shark tank with, with a very selfish attitude. Me, me, me. I just, you know, I need money. My business is the best. You give me the money. They forget. It's about when does the shark, or the investor get his money back. 
And, oh, well, I'll give you a 5% return on your investment for sure, right? Well, guess what? I'm not a bank, and I may be paying more than 5% if I'm raising capital, you know? So, um, it's you know, I don't always just use my own money. I like to use other people's money, too. So, um, you know, so, you know, make sure that you, you bring some seasoned people around you. And, again, this is the creation of the dream team. And this is... Um, you know, surrounding yourself with some experts, some mentors, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, I mean, look, I know you guys, you, you know that I'm launching my new book, The Mentor to Millions. And and this is all oh, yeah. about these kinds of, of things, right? Getting mm -hmm. the right mentors, how to get a mentor, how to pick a mentor. And if you're a mentor, how to be a good, um, if, if you're being mentored, how to be the best mentee for that mentor, right? So, um, mm -hmm. and, and so I think that, I think we've hit two. I think the, the third thing that, that I like to see, if, if this is possible, is I like to see some kind of proof of concept or some kind of legwork that's been done already. I don't like just taking a, a, a shot in the dark, like, okay, I don't know what my customer acquisition cost. I haven't tried it. I don't, you know, <laughs> go get some Facebook ads. Go, go try some Instagram. Give me a little success. Go down to the flea market. If you've got a product, put it up in front of the, you know, I mean, flea markets aren't really open much right now, but you, you know what I'm saying, you know, mm -hmm. get, get some kind of, of preliminary results because it anymore today, it's tougher to get investors to just take a flyer. If you can show me some results, if, if I see something that's got some traction, I got a better chance of, of, of taking off with it. So I think those are three good Perfect. tips and guys, I'm, I apologize, but I, I got to run because um, I, I connect, connected with another um, situation here coming up. But if, if it's OK, if I could, uh, you know, just a, a little shame, shameful plug here. Please, 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 please do. Please do. KevinMentor.com. If I can put it up there. There it is. My co-author, Mark, Tim and myself. KevinMentor.com is a great place. And, and by the way, if you pre-order the book, it's coming out in September. If you pre-order the book, we have 30 days of free mentoring as part of that $20 wow. book purchase. Okay. Great value. So it's an amazing deal. Hope the folks listening can participate with us and join us. And guys, thanks for having me today. And thank you. Investors Live. I love it. It's a great business and many great things happening for the future. Yeah. Thank yeah, you we so much. It. All right. Take care. Appreciate it. See you. Appreciate everyone. All right. Bye have guys. a good day. See you. We'll see you guys. And a couple of weeks with our last episode. See you guys.